Uh, hello, I want to get in on the next live critique and see if you could give a bit of direction on this work I've been doing for Shane Olson's Creature Box class challenge for January. I've heard about this, but I don't know exactly what it is, uh, the, the Creature Box challenge. Uh, I obviously have missed the deadline, so now I don't feel like it is cheating to ask you to look at it. Um, getting critique is never cheating, right? Unless you were supposed to like do it completely by yourself, I don't know. Uh, I have hopefully attached, um, specifically feeling stuck on the fin details and would like to know how to go about creating these spiny bits without having a mess of geometry on my hands. So for this, that's what we're talking about. Any other tips or pointers you have beyond that would be greatly appreciated as well. I don't know if I'll be able to respond live as I'm typically at work, but I do think you are here. But no worries if you cannot respond. Again, for uh, people that are joining us late or won't be able to be here for the live critiques or see your stuff being critiqued, everything goes up on the YouTube channel later, so no worries there. I think the first thing, before we kind of get to our fin, um, proportionally, I think, you're, I think you're pretty dang close. I think there are just a few things like scaling up. Let's turn on local sim. Like, I just see some proportional differences, like your your boots probably need to be a bit larger. Do we have polypane on this or anything? No. So your boots probably need to be a bit larger. I think your hands are an appropriate, or your arms are an appropriate size, but the fingers feel a little kind of all over the place. I would try to define and plane these up a bit better, maybe coming through with something like a pinch brush and starting to define some of these planes a little bit more. I think that would kind of put you in a good direction. What I often do for fingers, so if we're kind of thinking at, about the most basic shape, uh, I try to make the tops of my fingers a little bit harder, a little bit sharper, and I try to make the bottoms a little bit softer and a little bit more round. So it's this idea of what's called straights versus curves. And this is just something that's a really good kind of general thing to do everywhere. Uh, it's one of these fundamentals for creating nice and clean and appealing shapes. So if we're looking here at the inside of your gloves, we're kind of getting like this dip in. I can see this curve running through here. But whereas in the concept, look at this line here for that inside portion of the glove, that silhouette. It's just pretty much a straight line. So if we can straighten this up a little bit, make that nice and clean through there. And then on the outside, you get this nice kind of really clean curve running all the way down, we start to get this really nice shape. So we got this straight on one side and a curve running down all the way on the other side. And it also creates this cool silhouette with it running into the fingers or the hand or whatever he's holding. So play around with that. I think that's just kind of general advice that I would look at for your, your kind of entire model here. Let's see. I think this needs to be filled in quite a bit more through the back of here. Does this have sub -dips? It does. Or is that just dynamically smooth? Dynamically smooth, no problem. So I would try filling in the back of this a little bit more. This is such a cool concept too, by the way. You guys should definitely go check out more of uh, Creature Box's work. And his neck, his like head and neck are definitely like, what's the word? Jousting forward? They're, his head is like pushed forward quite a bit more. You can just tell based on the angle of that neck there. So from like the three quarter view, which is what we're kind of looking at here. It's actually even less than a three quarter view. <laughs> awesome, that looks great. <laughs> uh, look at the angle difference here. So if I draw out my transpose line for that, and then if we look over here, whoops, see the difference in the angle between those two lines? So pull that neck and head forward quite a bit. So just do that from the profile, maybe in transpose master, push it all forward. That'll actually help to get this a little bit closer to the back of your neck and body. And I would still recommend inflating this up a little bit, but I think that'll also help in that area. Uh, let's see what else, what else really sticks out. I think, uh, if you did not see the stuff in the beginning for talking about like secondary forms and, uh, stuff for 
Or wait, it was this one. For like these kind of forms in here, getting really tight, trying to get some really clean lines. I'll go back and watch that. It was the first model that I looked at for our critique today. And I think that'll really help you start to get some of that feeling a bit better through here where it's feeling like cracked and kind of scaly and fleshy. Same thing around the top for the little, little angler or whatever it's called up here. Start to look at that. Clean up those lines. Really make your shapes feel a little bit more integrated as well. I would also, you know, obviously break symmetry up here and try to follow the, the shape that we see. This is, man, this is such a rad concept. <laughs> I know I said that already, but it really is. So to make these feel more integrated, I would start to like sculpt up and inflate around these. And then maybe think about subtracting your teeth from there to like get a really nice uh, cut. And then you can start inflating around there. So work on that, play around with that. I know that's quick and messy, but that's what we like to do here to get our points across. Uh, and then the shapes of the eyes. The eyes are, the eyes are quite, uh, they're, they're a little bit larger than what you have, I think. I think it's either a combination of that, plus they're just like squashed a little bit. It's not perfectly round. So I would try maybe getting just a little bit of squash there and maybe scale these up. They also don't feel like they're as bulgy as your eyes. So I don't think you're gonna be able to use perfect spheres for this. I think you're gonna to have to, like if we look at the silhouette of this eye, either you're gonna to have to squash it a little bit or what you're gonna to have to do is scoot it in and scale it up and get like really, really big eyes in there. I'm just looking at the silhouette here, kind of judging on that. So look at that. This angle feels a little bit weird to me as well. For that slant, I would try pulling out that bottom area a little bit more. Kind of feels like it's tilting down a little bit too much. Obviously, this is gonna take a little bit of time for you just to show you very quickly what I'm talking about. And then, let's see here. Cool, I think that's all I'll say, other than um, you know, just finishing out the rest of the pieces, being a little bit more clean, and uh, paying attention to those, those transitional areas a little bit more. Uh, in terms of the fins, so you mentioned uh, just kind of like a general idea for the technique that you can tackle these with. I mean, there's a ton of different ways that you could go about this. I think, um, let's just grab one of these really quick. Obviously, again, think like integration stuff. It's kind of like a, it's not really a divot, more so what it is is it's the flesh kind of like folding up and around there. So pay special attention to that. Whoops. So kind of think about those areas as well. And then for the actual fin, let's see, what do we got? What do we want to do here? I think to start, I'm going to run a Ziri mesh on here. I'm going to turn off half. And you know what, I'm gonna do a 0.1 remesh. So as low as I can possibly go. Look at the uh, silhouette of this shape versus what you have here as well. So it's like pretty much just a singular curve running all the way up and through there. So where this kind of connects, you kind of want that to continue to feel like it's flowing up and into there. So what I'm gonna do is first change the shape here, change the direction. So make that fleshy part feel like it's tucking over top of this and then make this feel like it's flowing up and in to there as a continuous line. So I've remeshed this extremely low. And then what I recommend doing for this, for any of the brushes that you're about to use, you should probably turn on back face masking because you're probably gonna have some areas that you struggle with. 
because you're, you're gonna sculpt through to the other side. So if you're gonna use something like the damn standard brush by default, it's gonna sculpt on the other side as well. And you might want that. I don't like using that. I find it to be very annoying. You know what? Let's change our tactic. I have a better idea. Uh, to an ore, uh, it's a weird perspective, I think. The one closer is much bigger than the other. Yeah, there's definitely some stuff being cheated here. And it might be cool to actually uh, play with the scale and make one a lot larger than the other. I don't know. That's, that's kind of your decision to make, I think. I think you could absolutely make them the same size. Maybe find a nice in-between there. Uh, there is poly paint. You can get rid of it if you want. And let's see. Make sure I didn't miss anything else here before we continue on. Mort Mort, what's going on, man? Thanks for the entertainment while cooking. No problem, dude. How are you doing? Um, coincidentally, you were streaming when I was checking your stuff on ArtStation. Well, welcome, Pepo. Pepo Drops, I believe. Thank you for the, uh, the kind words. I appreciate it, man. Uh, let's see. Might be cool to like make one really small and the other one really large. Yeah, that's what I was kind of getting at there. Do some asymmetry. Or, in, so once you get to the posing, once you start posing, make the eyes the same size. And what I would do is like make one like a little squinty and then make the other one like opened up really big. Cause that kind of feels like the direction, the expression was attempting to go there. So two ways that you can handle this. Obviously, you know, go through and use the damn standard brush or something like that and sculpt up on top and then use something like the move brush with AccuCurve turned on to start getting these sharp points of transition. That is one way that you could do this. But if I was gonna make this as clean as I possibly could, if I was gonna take the time to like really do this well, what I would do first, I'm gonna go down to polygroups and run a group front. So I only have one side here. I'm gonna turn on double. And then I'm just gonna delete hidden. Okay, so now I only have a single side, and let me remesh this really quick. I essentially just want a flat plane of polygons to work on. And actually I might, if I were gonna do this from scratch, I would probably take the time to remesh this and get a nice clean plane. So I don't wanna do I don't want to take the time to like do all of this, but I just want to show you very quickly. This is the topology brush. This might be something that you want to play around with. So essentially the way this works, whoops, you can just draw out your curves and start to get some polys really quickly. I'm not sure why we're being dumb up here, but I would play around with that. I'm not going to take the time to do that. Like I said, uh, just because I think that'll be a little bit more than what we want to do here today. But get a flat plane. This is not as flat as I would like. Uh, let's do, let me delete some of the edges around here. So because of the way this is turning, it's confusing Z remesher. And this actually doesn't need to be clean at all because once it remeshes, it will be extra clean. So I know this is really, really messy, but just so you can whoa, see the actual process here. ZPALQM83, thank you for the follow there. I appreciate that. So I've just chopped off a bunch of stuff and now it's dirty. So I'll run in group loops to clean up the edge very quickly. And then I'll run a Z remesh as low as I possibly can and hope that the topology is good enough for our demonstration. All right, I'm just trying to keep the general shape here. This is being frustrating. So what I'm gonna do I'm just going to show you how I would do it from scratch. <laughs> cube. Got a cube? Cool. That's awesome. I love cubes. Do you like cubes? Because I like cubes. I got a plane. Nice. Let's extend our plane. Let's also make our plane wider on the bottom. Slice it up. Add some edge loops. This is my cheat way of adding edge loops very quickly. <laughs> 
start to get the general shape of your fin. Her, der, der. Cannot grab that. It's important that you keep this as a flat plane. And then essentially we want to start blocking out the major shape of your fin. So we got a little bit of a rounded shape here. So it looks really boxy, right? But if you smooth that, it'll start to round out even more. So that's what we want. So I'll be using the Z modeler brush to insert a couple quick poly loops. Never use the add poly loop function with symmetry on if the edge loop is going to touch. Uh, it causes uh, zero measure to crash and it's no fun. They lose a bunch of stuff. Speaking of which, quick save for us. So now we have a really low poly plane that we can start shaping up with these fins. So what I would recommend doing is after you get in a few poly loops here, go through, hold spacebar over these edge loops and select bevel and just edge loop complete. And then what you can do is start to bevel these out. It's essentially just splitting the edge loop because this is just on a flat plane here. Make sure you turn off symmetry if you're doing something for the midline as well. You don't want to crash. And then what you can do is go through, and because these are polygrouped for you, you can mask off half of this and hopefully do this in one fell swoop. It doesn't look like it's going to cooperate. So you might have to take some time to come through and mask off some of these verts like every other edge loop here. This is actually the same way that I do um, pleating for skirts. If you've ever done something like that. So I'm just masking off that outside edge on this. And then I'm not going to do the whole thing. We can start to pull that in. I'm here. I keep trying to cheat and save time, but I might as well make it look good if we're going to take the time to do this. All right, so you can start to pull that in. Turn on dynamic smooth so you can start to get an idea for what that's feeling like. You can maybe add some more edge loops if you want to be uh, a little bit tighter with this shape. and. This is just super clean. It's a really nice way to do this. And you even have, here we'll control click and drag to clear our mask. You have some more points down here that you can start to pull and start to get a little bit of that kind of ridge shape going on. So we'll just kind of play around with these really quick, pushing and pulling some verts around. Nothing complicated, just the move brush. And we could probably exaggerate these even more and maybe you want to be a little bit more asymmetric with it, maybe follow the shape, look at that really close, and voila, beautiful. And then after you get this to a really nice place, because it's not quite there yet, what I would do is take the Z Modeler brush again, you're going to hover over a polygon, hold the space bar, and choose Extrude All Polygons. And then all you have to do is look at it from the side, control or just click and drag, and you'll start to give your mesh some thickness. And then you can smooth that out, see what that's looking like. Cool, cool, cool. When you do that, make sure that you go down into your display properties and toggle off double if you have it on, because your mesh is most likely inside out. So just click on flip, that'll flip that. It's all good to go. And now from here, you can add some subdivision levels, continue sculpting on this with all your other sculptural brushes, and get that as close as you can there. Maybe you can pinch this up more towards the top. If you want to get these really strong, like, uh, bony landmarks for the fin, what I would recommend doing is using something like a curve tube brush. Use the curve tube, <laughs> what did I just say? Curve tube brush, go into your stroke menu, go into curve modifiers, size, toggle that on, crank up, crank down, and voila. You have a veiny, or veiny, a uh, bony piece of geometry that you can start inserting on here. Maybe we can play with that a little bit more and maybe we can go into our let's see where is it curve functions and I'll turn up my curve step a little bit what that does it makes it take less steps so that there are less polygons less chance for it to kind of mess up and get a little wonky there and then after I insert a few of these maybe let's just make it its own separate subtool you can play around with cleaning this up maybe you can keep that as a separate mesh maybe you can blend it in on top of that later on 
Um, I, I think that's pretty much it. That's kind of how I would handle these in the cleanest way possible. Uh, I think that'll be a good way uh, for you to kind of get started here, play around with those few tools. And I think you'll be well on your way to creating some super clean geometry for your fins. Uh, I, I would probably, you know, after I shaped this up and got it even further, I would just dynamesh these all together. And then I'd have like these bony kind of uh, landmarks here, maybe just like three or four of these kind of running through. If you want to inflate these, make sure you can see them from both sides or something like that. Maybe you need to thin this out, maybe made it a little bit too thick. Play around with it, and I think you'll be in a good place. Good luck to you, man.